Hey everybody, this is Candice Adewale of The Loving You Lifestyle, and I am back with another video. I hope all of you are doing well, that you've been busy, that you've been productive. Um, I know I have been, and um, yeah, today we are back with a great video. We are talking about the five types of women that will hinder your feminine lifestyle journey. So as you all know, I am really big proponent of women living a consciously feminine lifestyle. And I know that when I first started out really making a conscientious effort to embrace my feminine and live in the feminine, there were just people that I had to cut off, and people that were getting in the way. And so we're going to start from the, I guess, the bottom and go down the list. So number five is the sabotager. The sabotager. <laughs> this is the type of woman <clears throat> that she truly doesn't want to see you happy. Deep down inside, they are jealous of you and they really don't want to see you do better than them. And you know, what's amazing to me about that is, is that, you know, women can be so competitive sometimes and they really don't, first of all, understand the emotion of jealousy. They don't understand that when you feel jealous, that's not your cue to sabotage someone, but that is your cue to reflect and evaluate your own life so that you can level up. You know, obviously, if someone's triggering jealousy inside of you, those are areas that you feel insecure about yourself. And you maybe need to look at that person to see what they're doing, not sabotage them. But sabotagers, they don't want to see you do better than them. So they get very competitive. And then they start acting like there's not enough room for everybody else to do their thing and stay in their lane. And they try to, to go after you. So sabotagers will do things like, I mean, if they don't like actually physically sabotage you, uh, like slash tires or something of that nature, um, what they will do is encourage you or at the very least, not discourage you from doing the things that keep you stuck in your ways, the ways that you're trying to move out of. People who are, women who are sabotagers, they will oftentimes talk badly about you behind your back so that other people don't like you. Uh, they just don't want anybody to see, you know, your shine. And so they'll try to, to stick, you know, stick bad thoughts and feelings um, about you in other people's heads. They'll also do shady things like know that you're trying to lose weight or something and they'll just bring you food and take you to all these good restaurants. And, and you have to watch, you really have to watch people like that because women like that are very sneaky and very, very manipulative. They'll offer fake support act like they're really enthusiastic about being on your team or doing certain things with you or building sisterhood with you. And in fact, they just keep you close so that they can watch your moves so that they can stay one step ahead of you. They'll also do things like find a hundred reasons why your ideas won't work. Oh my God. <laughs> I had to deal with somebody like this um, fairly recently, too. Uh, there was this woman that I know, and every time I would tell her one of my ideas, like she would always be like, well, are you sure that's going to work? Or, you know, I heard this, this, and that's always something negative, nothing encouraging. But, however, every idea that she came up with was all of a sudden a great, awesome idea. And she was like so excited about it and she was so sure it was going to work. You know, I saw that because I'm the kind of person I'm very observing. And sometimes I won't say anything. I think maybe that's a Taurus in me. But I won't say anything. I'll just observe your behavior. 
But I observed this about her several times. I said, you know what? She's a low key hater. I can't even mess with her like that because she's the kind of woman that she likes to be right. She likes to be in control and she really doesn't want to see me do better than her. So she's going to try to, to, um, create doubt in my mind so that I won't go forth with my ideas. And I think that it's really important to know this because as women, we're constantly creating. But you have to understand that when your ideas that you are, you know, having inside of your heart and they're kind of like in that incubation stage or in that infancy stage, you have to be careful of who you share those ideas with. Because if someone's negative energy is greater than your positive energy and your certainty that what you are creating will be successful, it sometimes will just collapse. So don't share your ideas with everybody because you have women like this out there to get you. Um, And they'll oftentimes make you doubt yourself and your abilities. So again, women like that, recognize it, cut them off quick. Number four, fake Feminists and the feminazis. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Where do we start with the feminazis? Okay, first, let me say this. I do understand that there are feminists who can be feminine, and I'm not talking about those women. But I think that there are like left wings in every arena. And so the feminazis are that. In the feminist movement, those are the women who are all the way left wing. They um, have a lot of negative things to say about men. They can't understand why a woman would want to be traditional. And although I realize that some of you you may not be traditional, and that's fine. Um, They may not understand why a woman would want to live in her feminine energy because they're so used to celebrating the masculine and be in their masculine energy in order to get ahead to prove that they're the same and equal to a man, that they just think living a consciously feminine lifestyle is dumb. And so those are the women that are going to call you a pick me. Those are the women that are going to down talk your choices to uh, live a particular kind of way, move a, a particular kind of way, and to use all the feminine attributes to your advantage because they don't understand how to celebrate the feminine and what that's all about. And honestly, they don't want to know what it's all about. But the feminazis, like I said, they're very left wing in their approach to feminism. And a lot of times these are the women that will, to me, fight for the most ridiculous things like slut walks and slut shaming and you know I just if when it comes to things like that I just feel like for women's rights we have so many other things that we could be fighting for in a more powerful way other than some of the frivolous things that are out there um and so those women kind of fall right in line with what I like to call the fake feminists fake feminists are those women who talk the feminist talk But in reality, they're not really living that type of lifestyle. Like there is this one writer, which whose name I cannot remember for the life of me, but she wrote an article recently about how women need to pay 50% or 50, you know, do the 50, 50 thing when they're on dates. And I just, uh, when I, when I just read that, I just said, okay, let me see who this woman is. So, you know, I went and I did some research on this woman and this woman is married to a multi-million billionaire. She lives in New York. She's a, a New York socialite. And I'm like, okay, you're married to a millionaire and I'm going to guess you do not pay 50-50 for your lifestyle. Yet you are sitting here telling the average woman that, in order to be equal to a man, you need to pay your equal share on dates. And that is just garbage. Everyone who knows me knows that I think 50-50 is like the dumbest thing ever um, for a variety of reasons. And we'll have to talk about that in another, another video. 
But fake feminists really, really work my nerves. And those are women you really, really need to, you know, move far away from because they, I think deep down inside, they really don't want other women to enjoy the benefits that they <clears throat> have. And I had another um, person I had to cut out of my life who was like that. You know, I have a Facebook page that I, you know, I'm, I'm always on. And I noticed that this was a person I would always pop on my Facebook page to only comment when they had something to say in disagreement with me. And while I, you know, I feel like everyone can disagree with me, that's fine. But when you only come on my page to disagree with me, I have a serious issue with that. So this is a person who would, you know, talk against traditionalism. She would always have something to say in regards to my stances on traditional femininity and uh, traditional uh, gender roles and things of that nature. However, this woman is a stay-at-home mom whose husband has maintained her since they got married when she was 21. And I'm just sitting there like, "Uh huh? Like, I don't see you complaining about your own life. You you know, you seem like you're having a fabulous time with your life and and enjoying the benefits of your husband maintaining you. Yet you talk this kind of talk that is against all of that. And so I just had to chalk it up as that this particular woman just didn't want other women to enjoy her lifestyle. And she was doing her best to make it seem like it was just such a bad idea. Well, yeah, feminists, femi- feminists, fake feminists, and feminazis, they have to go. Next is the mean girl. The mean girl is pretty much explanatory. I mean, mean girls are mean. Mean girls will do things like attack you on social media. They will participate in a lot of negative uh group female behavior uh, that is just meant to destroy you. And so with that type of thing, you have to just cut those types of women off cold turkey as soon as you um, see that. See that. I mean, me girl behavior can take forms is be so many different ways. Oh my goodness. I've seen it all. And you know, one thing that I'm so surprised at, I am surprised at how many grown women that I see that are 30, 40 plus years old participating in online bullying, which is definitely me girl behavior. I see it every single day and I'm like, wow, this is unbelievable to see how immature and how mean some women can be towards each other. And, you know, a a lot of things happen within these Facebook groups where, you know, everything is good until maybe you rub somebody the the wrong way or you, um, you know, disagree with the ring leader and then, you know, all hell breaks loose and you just have a, online bullying attacks. And I actually was subject to that a few years ago. And it just perplexed me. I was just like, wow, these women have no lives. Like they are obsessed with me. And it was really hard for me to understand why these women would continuously talk about me online when I was doing my best to you know, break away from the situation I was breaking away from and just really mind my own business and stay positive. So, I mean, that caused a lot of, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. And I see it continually, especially online, but I've seen it in real life too. So me girls, it's number three. Number two is the basic Betty. I get the term basic Betty for my teen teacher, Fatih <laughs> Rasha. And, and the basic Betty, she's, you know, she's not a bad woman, but basic Betty is just, just basic. And I think when you're on your journey of living a feminine lifestyle and you're really getting into the power of your femininity and uh, all the different components like being sensual and exuding, you know, your 
your energy and owning your sexuality and maybe dressing differently. The basic Betty moves different. She doesn't see how that's important. She may feel uncomfortable around you. So she may discourage you from maybe dressing up. You know, as you're on your journey, you might want to start experiencing different things, going different places, traveling. And this type of woman will just hold you back. So the basic Betty, you know, you may have to just cut your time down with the basic Betty and replace your time with her, with other women who are on the same journey. Now it's time for number one. Number one is what I like to call the worker bee. The worker bee is that woman who believes that you're not a real woman unless you have exerted all your energy working and doing things for other people. So they are the one the one type of woman that is going to judge you for your choices to do less, to not be stressed out, to um, utilize some of the tools in your feminine bag, to, um, you know, to really live a certain kind of lifestyle where you are relaxed and free. And to be quite honest, they are the type of woman that they don't even believe that they deserve that. So they don't believe that you deserve it either. And I know um, as I was growing in my feminine, um, I guess, knowledge, I had to learn that my being a woman and defining myself as a woman was not based on how much work I could pack into one day and run myself ragged. Now. I value the fact that I'm not run down at the end of the day. And I think that should be every woman's goal. So when you have women like that, they're usually going to be very negative and you're going to have to cut them out of your life because they will at every turn make you feel guilty and talk down about you. And they're probably talking about you behind your back. So those are the five types of women who will hinder your feminine lifestyle journey. Just be cautious of that because who you surround yourself with on your journey is so very, very important. And sisterhood is everything, especially when you are choosing to go against the status quo and do something that is a little bit different. And so I want to take the time to thank you all for listening to me. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe this video, and to also follow me on Instagram. The link to my Instagram is going to be in the information section, and of course, you can see more about my journey living here in Rome, Italy. I look forward to talking to you ladies on the next video. Ciao!